Hello, the Dark Mystery 44 here, and in today's video, it'll be a very quick video about this hexadecimal cell that I've designed. So this is a rather simple design um, that takes a serial hexadecimal input um, and can store it, and then you can read it back out as a either a single um, output or in serial if you want. So the way this works is that, well, first of all, since I have eight cells, we have to send um, eight hexadecimal values at once. And then, um, so what happens is when the first hexadecimal value, say I put here, reaches um, this cell over here, then what's going to happen is all the cells' um, right lines will activate um, and it will store the corresponding hexadecimal value because each of these is separated by like, I think it's one or two ticks so basically it'll be able to um, store whatever the 8 bit of hexadecimal well 8 hexadecimal values that you sent so if you did want to just do an individual cell it wouldn't be actually too hard to add some like writing control um, what you'd have to do is with well the input over here you'd also have to add some sort of like um, comparator locking system like this so you can allow the data to go in or not otherwise any data that you store in the hexadecimal cell which I'm using uh, this comparator setup like this uh, will get corrupted and yeah that doesn't you don't want that to happen so the reason why it's input in serial is because it doesn't matter um, if the cells have data in them because it's the cells will only keep the state of whatever data it is in when the serial line finally hits the end cell over here so it so eight values go in here and they'll go along here and of course this um comparator loop will um start having whatever data input into it but it'll only um save its cor corresponding um value so cell zero will save um data value zero cell one will save data value one um because of the way the timing's done so when we output it, you can either output them individually, just like this, um, or the other way you can output it is in serial, which is probably most preferable. You'd probably use this as some sort of buffer circuit. Um, and the way we'd output it in serial is just by um, turning them all off and on like this. I think you do it all at the same time because they already have the delay between them because it's hexadecimal. So this is extremely sim similar to my um, RAM design because of course we're um, using the alternating up down up down kind of pattern um, so we can use these comparator locks like this um, but the actual memory circuit is a very simple design where all we have to do is use two comparators like this to save um, any hexadecimal value and normally you um, use this as like a um, almost a pulse lengthener so like this as you can see it lengthens the pulse but if we place a block here as well as here then instead of being a pulse lengthener it'll just save it'll, it'll save whatever state it is and it'll just keep it indefinitely now to um, be able to clear this cell we can actually power one of these comparators with a repeater like this and of course it has to be on subtract mode so there we go and it'll set the cell back to zero and then of course um, all that has to happen is we have um, reading and writing controls so that's as simple as just adding more comparators like this a one here and one here and we'll put those in subtract mode as well and these will have repeater inputs like this so and then you can use some sort of glass tower like this um, to uh, for, for your power at least the, for, for the um, control wires and this basically means that we can have a hexadecimal input over here um, in analog of course and we can choose whether to save it or not so at the moment it's saving it as well as outputting it because I should really place down levers like this if we just turn all these on real quick um, we can input our hexadecimal value here and choose to save it like this and if we um, read it into the cell we of course also have to toggle the cell so this would have to now uh, just be toggled off so now it's saving it so this is basically the clear cell you you press this whenever you input a value so say I want to input a value of a different signal strength first I'd clear the cell then I'd input it and that's because say the cell current had a very um, high signal strength so well high signal not not signal strength so um, say we put in a very high value and we um, input it into the cell like this 
Now we want to store a lower value, for instance, let's put in a very low hexadecimal value like this. So now we have a very low signal strength. If we try input this into the cell, as you can see, it's not going to do anything because the high value overrides the lower value. So first of all, we have to clear the cell, then we can input it. As you can see now, it's storing that low value. Then of course, the output system is very simple. It's just outputting like that. And then, so this design at the moment is, well, five, technically six wide if we try stack it. But of course, um, I've got it down to three wide here. It just doesn't have this input circuit because we input in serial. So of course it wouldn't be too hard to do that. So the main reason I'd recommend inputting in serial instead of actually just, well, normal inputting, so per cell um, or one bit at a time, is because uh, we're going to run into a lot of issues with all these extra comparators adding lots of delay. So for instance, if we input a value here, um, to get to the cell at the very end, we're going to introduce one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven extra ticks of delay for the value for the data there to reach here and that's just a bit annoying so preferably it's better just to input in serial so you have a lot of cells having data all at once now of course this is stackable so when we input this we are inputting not just eight hexadecimal values for the top ones we're actually inputting 64 hexadecimal values at once because we have eight cells like this so that's quite a lot of data to actually just input into it and it should only take roughly 8 or 16 ticks, I can't remember. So it, it would be very fast to input a massive amount of data fast. So yeah, that's just this design and let me just show a bit of an overview. So we have the inputs here, which are going to block into the actual memory cell, which is controlled by this comparator and a repeater with our tower down like this. And this comparator reads off redstone blocks, which um, are here on this cell. So when you stack it, it's um, up, down, up, down, and it is just a displacement of one block, basically. Then it goes into this block, which this comparator reads, and we can also toggle this output on or off uh, by this um, repeater over here in this tower. So this control wire will allow us to output on. So, and then the way I've done the busing is fairly simple. Because um, the cell goes up, down, up, down, it's a bit complicated than just doing a line. You have to just be very careful with the way it works. So because we're going that direction with the data, um, we can output um, the signal strength into this block through the comparator. And while we do have two redstone dust, what's going to happen is the signal strength won't degrade because um, say we input a signal strength over here in this block, this comparator will read it transfer it to this um, redstone line or dust, it'll go through this block and be read by this comparator and the signal strength will be preserved. It won't read the redstone up here, it'll read the redstone here. Now if we output from this cell instead, the comparator will output a full signal strength here and a lesser one here, but this uh, comparator will read from this one up here, it won't read this one, so because it re reads the highest signal strength. And we can see that by, um, let's just do an example like this. So if we go like this, as you can see, we get full signal strength. And then say it was here instead. So this is gonna be a bit harder to do, um, to power this one. Um, I do a lever like this. Um, this is still a full signal strength because it's reading through the block. So it shouldn't matter too much. So that's how the busing's done and it's just stacked. Um, it's three wide, as you can see. And then we do the exact same thing for the input. As you can see, this is how the input's done. So it's a very similar way of doing things. So this is more of a, you'd have to have a very specific use case if you're using some sort of cell like this, especially with the serial. But you can use them as just individual hex cells if you really wanted to, it's just, um, the busing adds a whole bunch of delay that you'll have to account for, so it's not really viable as a mass storage thing. So I hope you like this quick video. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'm out.